Welcome to CT Small Business Toolkit, where small business innovators and influencers share the advice that will help you turn your idea into a business and your business into a success. Let's get started. Our guest this week on CT Small Business Toolkit is Rob Nelson. He's the founder and CEO of Grow. That's a cloud-based software service that gives entrepreneurs beautiful business dashboards and minutes to track their key metrics, inspire their teams, and make better decisions. We want to learn a little bit about Rob's entrepreneurial journey as well as about some of the lessons he's learned along the way. And Rob, thanks very much for being with us. Thanks, Greg. Where did you get bitten by the entrepreneurial bug and how did it lead you to grow? You know, I guess I didn't consider myself an entrepreneur. I got thrown into a business and and ended up buying it and just growing it from there. Never thought of myself as an entrepreneur until we successfully sold that and I worked for a larger company and then just had the itch and saw things that drove me crazy, the opportunity that was out there and how to do something else. And so that's when I, I said, okay, I'm more entrepreneurial than I gave myself credit for. And obviously different technological developments create different opportunities, the cloud being one of them. What was it about the cloud and some of the emerging uses of it that gave you the idea for Grow? You know, when I left my last company, I said, "What? There, there's five things that I really want to do that are on my checklist. One is that I know B2B service. I don't know anything about consumer products. I've got to stay with what I know. Number two is it needs to be technology-driven, software-driven. That's where my passion is. Three, it had to be scalable. I wanted to build something that had an effect beyond just even companies in the U.S. And I wanted something with reoccurring revenue as well. So those are different areas that um, I looked at and You know, as I came up with Grow, this kind of matched everything that I I wanted and was looking for, and and that's what caused me to jump and make take the leap. And at that point, was there a pretty substantial market for what you wanted to do, or did you have to explain it to quite a few people since a lot of the things that are involved in this business uh, were relatively new? I think the market is there. I mean, I wanted to build something that addressed a problem, and, and I guess that was the fifth issue, dr- address a problem I saw I had as an entrepreneur or as a small business owner that I couldn't find a solution for. As I talked to other people, everybody seemed to relate with it as we went out and, and gave the story as we raised venture capital money. I think the investors saw it, and it was relatively easy for us to raise that first round of capital. Rob, uh, in addition to the work you do at Grow Every Day, there are certain components of the business world. You mentioned some of your areas of expertise, technology and B2B and that sort of thing. But in, in also putting this together and working with different companies, you've learned different ways to transform company culture. To transform it means obviously that there's something you want to improve upon. So what do you see as some of the more common issues that need to be dealt with in a company's culture? And what are the most pragmatic ways of going about addressing those? Great question. So I'll share just for a minute my experience in in changing our own company culture on my last company. So I was the typical entrepreneur, heads down, and the thought was I just work as hard as I can, and I just didn't have very much direction in what we were doing. So we brought in a management consultant, and she helped us to really identify the metrics that drove the business and what was it that we should measure that really made a difference and improved performance. And as we put that together, we were tracking it in multiple spreadsheets, but that really became the company's scoreboard. So then we published that and held people accountable to it. And that's what radically shifted our company culture. So where I I felt like I didn't have much direction before, we had this clear vision. And as an ADD entrepreneur, I now had focus. So if it wasn't on the metrics that really drove the company forward, I didn't chase after every new project or everything that was exciting that came up on my plate. Overall, the, the company culture that I had, you know, we started to experience this change where accountability just naturally increased. You know, it brought the A players to the surface. And some of the people that weren't our best performers would say things like, you know, this just isn't a family anymore. I don't, I don't really like this. And they naturally they weeded them out. And the A players came to the surface, and and uh, execution became really, really, really good. And probably most importantly, we just had a lot more fun. That was the experience of really becoming, I think, data-driven in our culture. And so having 
seeing that and the growth that we experience as a result of that was like, okay, there's something real here that I want to go help other companies, small business owners to try and implement this and to create a system that can build an, uh, a company scoreboard of their performance in real time and transform that culture because it sounds odd, but it was, all, you know, a magical of what happened to us at my last company. Well, let's talk about the scoreboard a little bit more. Metrics, obviously, a big part of what Grow offers to different businesses, and there are obviously many different types of businesses out there, so the metrics they might need could, could vary. How much of what businesses need on their scoreboard is essentially universal, regardless of what type of business they're in, and how much is kind of specialized to what they do? I would say 70 to 80% of the metrics are the same for our business as your business or somebody else's business. I mean, it's the 20 to 30% that may be very specific to your industry or, or unique to your business. But some critical metrics that everybody should be looking at, um, first and foremost, would be customer churn. You know, how often are customers churning out or are you losing customers? And there's, you know, it's, it's almost like a spider web. You know, when a spider creates a web, he creates three anchors onto something, and from those anchors, then he builds his web. So, you know, we kind of look at three, what are those three anchors that would apply to everyone? One would be customer churn. Another one would be leads and the lead flow coming in that result in sales. And, you know, what can you do to improve that? And once you track leads coming in and from what sources, there's a lot of supporting metrics around that that then you can build upon. And the third metric is customer engagement. How often are your customers using or engaging with the product or service? And uh, from that, again, supporting metrics would be satisfaction, but really trying to identify how do customers engage. And that could be done through a couple of different ways. One that we see is like a customer net promoter score and measuring that, or as simple as like a quick survey to your customers and, and quantifying those results or boiling it down to a score similar to Net Promoter Score or the time that they're going without using a product or service. So th- those are a couple of examples of customer engagement, but those are the core, the three core metrics that we see as being critical to everyone's success. Rob, based on your work so far, how much of a difference has this scoreboard made for your clients? You know, the feedback has been really tremendous. And I think when they, when the customers use the platform to really build the right metrics and they engage the team with it, that, that's the most critical thing. When they engage the team with it, and that's where the magic happens, right? So in staff meetings, it's around the dashboard, and that's what we're seeing our customers do. And saying, hey, you own this metric. What are you doing this week to drive it and move the needle? Well, I'm going to do these three things. Okay, great. Halfway through the week, you're checking in and seeing the performance. And if it's not working, you make a change and you pivot. Otherwise, it's usually left up to the end of the month or the end of the quarter by the time you have a review and you look at the reports and the numbers and start to make adjustments. Uh, Real quick, how can folks uh, learn more about you and get in touch with you if they'd like to benefit from your services? They can go to grow.com. It's the website, grow.com. They can learn a lot about the services, see the pricing, and and we can give you a personal online demo that's very quick and, and shows you how this can uh, be useful in your organization. Fantastic. Rob, thanks very much for being our guest today. Continued success. Hey, thank you. Rob Nelson is the founder and CEO of Grow. I'm Greg Corumbus reporting for CT Small Business Toolkit. Thanks for joining us on CT Small Business Toolkit. Be sure to visit our website, ct.walterskluwer.com, and follow at CT Corporation on Twitter. We'll see you next time on CT Small Business Toolkit.